Hi friends, I'm Crystal Bessie with the Louisiana Farm to School program. This month's Louisiana Harvest of the Month was so loved by American writer Mark Twain that he declared, when you taste it, you know what the angels eat. And it is a heavenly treat on a hot summer day. It's watermelon. Louisiana is known to grow some of the sweetest varieties of watermelon. So today we're in Washington Parish at Perry Talley's farm to learn a little bit more about this angelic fruit. Watermelons are members of the cucurbita family of gourds that include other culinary vegetables like cucumbers, squash, and pumpkin. And they're even considered a fruit and a vegetable. There are more than 300 varieties of watermelon with certain favorites in Louisiana such as Jubilee or Charleston Gray. But more than variety, the region where watermelon grow and soil quality play a huge role in creating the most perfect, sweetest watermelon. I'm here today with Perry Talley and his daughter Vivian, and he is a Washington Parish watermelon farmer. He's going to tell us about what makes watermelons so delicious. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much nice for having to meet us you. today. Glad you could come out today. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your farm and, and how you got into farming? Well, we're a wholesale operation. Um, we, it, it has evolved over decades. Uh, I can remember, um, my grandfather going out with a hoe and a nail apron to plant seed by hand. Uh, thank goodness we've come a long way since then. For years, we have grown watermelons here in Washington Parish. Uh, we are Washington Parish natives. Part of what makes a Washington Parish melon so great is the soil, the climate. The varieties have a lot to do with it, and I believe the people have a lot to do with it too. So That's right. You gotta have that love for growing watermelons. That's it. Yeah. So Vivian is going to be helping Judy in the kitchen today. I'll let you go ahead and get started with her. Bye. Nice to meet you. And I'd like to talk a little bit more. I know you all were in the field earlier today, but can you tell me a little bit more about um, the best growing conditions for a watermelon? Watermelons are a high light loving crop. Uh, need a lot of sunshine, full sun actually. They are typically a summer crop and even Despite their name, they don't require a tremendous amount of water. Watermelons need water at key times, but they like to be well drained. So your soil here is uh, going to be sandy, I'm, I'm guessing, and kind of... Sandy, well drained, typically, yeah. is, is what the watermelons like. So I see these have uh, some long vines. This is mainly how a watermelon grows, is by on a vine? Absolutely. Watermelons start out as a seed, and then, of course, they germinate, and they grow into a plant, and then the plant begins to produce runners and those runners will run out depending on the variety six to eight feet. Once they start blooming the male blooms will appear first and then the female blooms will come on and then pollination happens and then you get fruit set. The watermelon pollen is a little heavier and requires bees or, or some mechanism to transfer that pollen from the male flowers to the female flowers. As, as the fruit grows, you're looking at you know 30 to 45 days from fruit set to harvest uh, for them to ripen up. So I have a fun fact for you. Did you know that they found watermelon in King Tut's tomb? Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, it's true. They've act, watermelon uh, domestication has been happening for about 5,000 years. So I'd say that these watermelons we have here are as good as they get, right? Oh, absolutely. I would not yeah. argue with that. Yeah, they're sweet and juicy, not like their wild ancestors. Those were more uh, tough rind and they were bitter. They tasted bitter or bland. So these are going to be much more pleasant to eat. All right, well, I'm learning a lot about watermelons and how they grow, um, but it's hot out here. Let's have a refreshing treat. Sounds good. I think Judy has something waiting for us in the kitchen. All right. Let's go see what she has. Hi, I'm Judy Myhan from LSU, and I'm here soaking up the sun at the Tally Farm with Vivian. Hi. Watermelon's a delicious, healthy fruit. It's soaked with nutrients. A watermelon is approximately 92% water, so it's great to eat on a summer day to stay hydrated. Each juicy bite has plenty of vitamins, but it also has a pigment called lycopene. 
It helps your heart stay healthy. So the more watermelon you eat, the healthier your heart will be. Did you know you can eat all the parts of the watermelon? No. You can eat the seeds, you can eat the rind, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. I like to combine that sweet flesh, especially when watermelons are in season like this, and I cut open a watermelon and have a lot of watermelon left over, and make a salad. I add it to a salad. This salad has cucumber and watermelon and red bell peppers and a little fresh basil from my garden. You can also eat the rind, and I like it pickled, and it's easy to do. So after you've eaten all the delicious flesh from the watermelon, you take some rind like this and get most of the red part of the rind off. Peel the green part of the rind, and we're going to use a vegetable peeler to do that. I'm going to cut it into some small pickle-shaped pieces and pack them into this jar that has the pickling liquid in it. It's got some salt and some vinegar and sugar. Sometimes I put some spices, like star anise or some cloves, black peppercorns. Sometimes people like to put a little jalapeno in it to make it hot. The reason you have to pack it is, as you notice, the watermelon is floating right now and we want to get it down into that juice. And then let it sit overnight, if you can wait. And it's delicious when it's done. Today we're going to maximize our lycopene intake with a cool smoothie. So these are some frozen strawberries. We're just going to fill this about halfway full. We're going to top it with about the same amount. Pick out some that don't have a lot of seeds in them. I mean, you okay. can do it with the seeds, but they get in the way a little bit. I'm going to put just a little bit of water to get it, this watermelon water to get it started. Is that cool? Yeah, it's cool. All right. So we've blended it together. It's smooth, and now we're going to enjoy it. The watermelon's so sweet that you don't need to add any sugar to it, and it's really warm here this morning. Would you like to try this? Yeah. Okay, great. Give it a taste. Oh, this is really good. Is it? Oh, very yeah. good. And cool and refreshing. Those frozen strawberries gave it mm -hmm. another little tang. Mm -hmm. you think? Yeah. So now that I have all this watermelon, how should I store it? In the re should I store it in the refrigerator? Yes. Once it's cut from the rind, you should store it in the refrigerator. Okay. So how about before it's cut? Before it's cut, you should store it in a warm, dry place, but not too hot or it will spoil. Oh, okay. That's good to know. All of the recipes that we've created today and that we've shown you on this table are going to be available on the Seeds to Success website. So if you want to buy a good Louisiana watermelon, it's a good idea to know how to pick a good one. Let's join Crystal as she finds out how to select watermelon at the market. When a watermelon, as it grows and starts to ripen up, you start to get a ribbing effect. Uh, kind of like the ribs in a pumpkin, except not nearly as pronounced. You can feel it a little, a little more than you can see it. Uh, the stripes kind of tend to, uh, to hide the ribbing mm -hmm. in it. But if you run your hand over it, you can kind of feel the, the ribbing. That's one indicator. Another one is, is the belly light on the bottom. Now there's been some uh, open pollinated varieties in the past uh, that will actually turn yellow on the bottom when they're ripe. But normally once you lose the stripe pattern, if you, or, or whatever watermelon, if it's unstriped, you lose the pattern and you get a whitening of the, of the belly. That's another good indicator. But probably the one that's the most reliable is the tendril. Okay, so where the stem hooks to the vine, there's a tendril. And when that tendril is dead and, and kind of a, a dry consistency, that watermelon more than likely is ripe. Another thing you can look at is the tendril immediately following on both sides. And if they're dead and dry, 
as this one is, uh, that's about as ripe as that watermelon's gonna get. Now I have had people thump. Uh, there, there is a certain amount you can tell by tapping the watermelon. Uh, they make certain sounds. Um, what I found is normally that's more for telling if one's overripe or there's significant water damage inside. When you hit it, it'll sound like a flat tire. Mm -hmm. It just has an empty dead thud. Where so that's these have not a what you want. Echo. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Another thing about the rind is you don't want your fingernail to go into it. So that can be an indicator that it's um, overripe. overripe. And then you said another indicator of overripe is if it sounds like a flat tire and no echo. No yeah. echo. Okay. Well, Perry, thank you so much for the tour. Can you tell me where we can find your um, products? Sure, all over Southeast Louisiana and maybe even a little bit into Mississippi. Um, I have a couple of stores that we sell directly to um, and I have a lot of buyers that come out and send them all over. Great, great. Um, well, I really appreciate you having us here today. There's no better way to beat the summer heat than with a watermelon. So I had a great time and I learned a lot. Thank and you. Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah, and thank you Vivian as well for all your help. The Louisiana Harvest of the Month program showcases a different Louisiana grown food each month in Louisiana communities. We hope you will join us in tasting Louisiana this month.